Hey, Gates. Hey, what do you say, Chad? Funny seeing you here in Travis's office. Well, actually, I was just taking a break, and his chair was available. Well, you're just the person that I'm looking for. I think I've got something that you might be interested in. What? Well, you see, when I used to work over at the cafe, the art teacher for the Eastside Christian School used to come in a lot, and we got to know each other pretty well. Well, she was in there a few days ago and had mentioned to one of the waiters how she hadn't seen me around in a while. They explained to her how I had taken a job working over here. She told them what it was she was looking for, and so they gave her my phone number. She called me last night. Okay. Now, Chad, that all sounds very interesting. But could you get to the part about Gates? <laughs> sure. She was wondering if we might be interested in coming out and talking to the students there about what it is that we do here. You said Eastside Christian? Yeah. Well, I've known the principal over there for quite some time. What grade are we talking about? Uh, middle school and high school students. I was thinking that if you wanted, we could go together and maybe do a couple scenes from the show. Sounds good, man. You just set it up and let me know. It's already set up. We're going to go tomorrow after lunch. Thanks, Gates. All right. Oh, Chad, maybe Travis can go with us. Yeah, I think they were only wanting good actors. <laughs> what? What was that about? That boy's crazy. Yeah, but what's going on? Well, he's got us going to Eastside Christian School to talk about the show. Well, I want to go, too. Well, you can come. But what are you going to be doing? Well, we're going to do a couple of scenes and then just tell them about what we do here. When? Tomorrow after lunch. Oh, uh, no, I can't do it then. I got too much going on here. Oh, come on, man. You can get away for a few hours. Uh, no, Gates. You and Chad can get away for a few hours. Some of us still have scenes to rehearse, sets to build, props to find. And now, having said that, my good man, I'll have to pass on the school field trip so that you and the Chad man can go by yourselves. Oh, right, I understand. But you're still welcome to come if you can work it into your schedule. All right, I will if I can. But if I can't, you just tell the school that this time we had to send the B team. And the next time, the A-list actors can come. There, done. What you working on? Uh, this scene that Travis and I are gonna do. Yeah, what is it? Um, it is about a businessman that uh, comes in to talk to a woman at a ministry. And? It's kind of hard to explain. Well, what's the idea? It's about a letter. A letter? Oh, like I said, it's kind of hard to explain. You'll just have to see it. <laughs> okay, I'll do that. Oh, and I finished our scene. I got it run off even. So when are you ready to rehearse? Uh, anytime. How about now? Oh, well, I really want to finish this, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Um, when can you rehearse, then? Anytime, Kelly. Mm, this afternoon? Oh, no, no. Gates and I have to go over our scene. Plus, Rudy wants to see the blocking, and it's pretty long, so that'll probably take most of the day. Okay. Um, how about tomorrow morning? Oh, no. Travis and I have to rehearse our scene. Oh, okay. So, when do you want to rehearse this? Um... Well, Kelly, I'm available here 24 hours a day, so you just name the day and the place, and I will be there. Right now. No, I really need to finish this. This afternoon? Nope. Cut that thing with Gates. Tomorrow morning? Travis. Hmm. Okay, uh, how about next month, the first Tuesday, in the afternoon, 3 p.m.? Oh, let me check on that. Yes, that looks like it'll be fun. Oh, no, sorry. I have a dentist appointment that day. Lisa. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> hey, guys, how'd it go? I thought it went well. Oh, don't listen to him. He's being humble. He had these kids in the palm of his hand, man. They loved him. Well, I love young people. What can I say? We just ended up doing a couple of scenes out of the show, and then Gates talked to him about what we do. Yeah, I took him through a normal work week. You know, told him about how I come up with all the ideas, how I write the whole show, uh, make sure you guys know your lines, rehearse with everybody, you know, kind of get it all ready. Listen to him. Oh, no, he's serious. <laughs> <laughs> no, he set him straight about what goes on here. And what did you do, Chad? Nothing. I just went along for the ride. Look, Chad spoke <laughs> well, too. Don't let him kid you. I just kind of hung back a little bit and let Gates steal the show on this one. <laughs> I see. Hey, listen, Gates. I, I really appreciate you going, man. Thanks again. No, thank you, Chad. All right. All right. So, was it good, Gates? It was great, man. You know, those students were really interested in what we do here. There's something about the whole entertainment industry that just gets people's attention. 
It just shows the power of it. Yeah, well, I wish I could have gone with you. Well, we asked you to come with us. Yeah, I know, but this was something Chad set up, you know, just for you two. You know, get to do something together, get to know each other better. Well, thanks, man. It did go well. Hey, Rudy. Hey, Joanna. Here's the lineup for this week, and as you can see, we've got everything except... The last scene. Yeah. Still working on it. Trying to come up with something. Well, what's the theme for this week? Theme for this week is standing up for what's right, even if you have to stand alone. Something like that. That's a good one. Now, if I can just get them to come up with a good one to end with, we'll be doing great. <laughs> well, somebody will come up with something. They always do. Well, I just don't like to assume anything. You know, we don't want to let pride enter in. It's not like we don't need the Lord to make this thing happen. I hear you, and I stand corrected on the way I said what I said. No, oh, sorry. No, you're right. I mean, you don't want success to come in and trick you into thinking that you're the one doing it when it's really the Lord who's doing it. Well said. Thank you. But I also don't feel like you and I are taking anything for granted here. I mean, we're both grateful to be here, but we also don't live in fear that, you know, we're going to go out of business next week. <laughs> so there's some security in it. And at the same time, we got to keep trusting in the Lord. Now, that was well said, Rudy. Yeah, it was. Rudy, what was that about pride entering in? Oh, yeah. I'll see you later. Gates. What do you say, Chad? What do I say? Word travels fast, is what I say. I think we're going to need an agent soon. What? Why do you say that? I got us another school. Now, how did you manage that? Well, you remember the art teacher you met this afternoon? Yeah. She has a very good friend who's the drama instructor at a public school, and she also happens to be a Christian. She was hoping we could come to her school and do for them what we did for Eastside. At a public school? Yes. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, that is cool. <laughs> so what do you say? Are you game? Of course I'm game. Good. We go tomorrow. It's already all set up. <laughs> You're so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, look into getting us an agent, will ya? <laughs> hey, Travis. So here's the script. When do you want to rehearse it? Whenever. Can you rehearse right now? No, I still have to finish this one. Mm. Well, when do you want to go over it then? Just whenever. Later this afternoon? No, it'll be time to quit time I'm done with this one. Tomorrow morning? I've got rehearsal with Gates and Chad. Tomorrow afternoon? Working on set stuff with Rude. Okay, well, when do you want to go over it? Whenever. Travis Connors. What? How about we just rehearse it Friday night after the show? That's fine. Did you hear what I just said? Every word, my dear. What did I say? You said you want to meet me on stage tomorrow afternoon and have my lines memorized and ready to go. Right. Thank you. Hey, Lisa. Hey. You know it's quitting time, young lady. What are you working on? I'm just trying to come up with something for our last scene. Oh, do you have an idea? Well, yes. What is it? No. Well, yes, no, what does that mean? I mean, I have an idea, but then I don't have an idea. <laughs> what does that mean? Exactly what I just said. Wait, you want to hear what I have so far? Sure. OK. Travis and Gates are standing on a street corner. After a minute, Chad approaches them. And? And that's what I have so far. Yeah, but what is your idea? Well, I just told you. You told me what? Well, you and Gates are standing on a street corner. And? And Chad walks up. <laughs> and? And oh, that's my idea. Oh, right. Well, that's a good idea. Why, thank you. Yes, that is a good idea. In fact, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat. You're wondering what's going to happen next, aren't you? You betcha. Gates and Travis standing on a street corner, that is some powerful stuff. And then the Chad man approaches, whoa, that has the makings of a mystery thriller. Well, what can I say, Travis? I'm just trying to do my part around here. And you are. I mean, don't let me stop those creative juices from juicing. You just keep working on that cliffhanger. In fact, I will suggest to Rudy that we do one of those to be continued. Gates and Travis standing on the street corner. Chad shows up. We freeze. 
the lights go to black, and then everybody walks off the stage. And then the audience is thinking to themselves, what was that? Yeah, they are. Are you done? No, I'm just getting warmed up. Okay. Travis and Gates are standing on a street corner, looking a little shady. Chad walks up. He looks like a tough guy, too. Gates says, do you have the weapon? Chad says, yes, it's in my pocket. Travis says, what weapon do you have? Chad says, the most powerful weapon on earth. Gates says, let's see it. Chad looks around, making sure the coast is clear. Then slowly and carefully, he pulls out a small pocket Bible. The word of God. Sharper than a two-edged sword. To be continued? To be continued. I like it, Lisa. But guess what? What? It has nothing to do with this week's theme. I know. But I like it. Thanks, Travis. So you just keep working on it. I will. And I will see you tomorrow. See you. Where's Chad? Uh, he's up in his dressing room. Hey, he don't feel too good. I don't think he's gonna be able to go. What was wrong with him? I think he got nervous or something. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But no, he really doesn't feel too well. I mean, you can ask him, but he mentioned he didn't think he's gonna be able to go. Wow. Well, if Chad can't go, you come with me. I got rehearsal with Kelly, and then I gotta meet with Rudy about the sets. Oh, come on, Trav. It's only gonna be a couple of hours. Look, it's about a 20-minute drive over to the school. I speak to the kids for one class period, which is usually about 50 minutes. Then I talk to him a little bit more afterwards, sign some autographs for about 30 minutes, then drive back. That'll be two hours, just like you said. And that's two hours too long for me to be away from here, man. I still got props I gotta build. Come on, man, this is gonna be fun talking to the kids. I'm sure it will be. But someone's got to run the show here while you're out doing these speaking engagements. <laughs> okay, man, I hear you. Well, look, I'll go and check with Chad, and if he doesn't fill up to it, then I guess I'll have to handle it all by myself. Oh, and love every minute of it. <laughs> I'll see you when I get back. All right, see ya. Okay, Rudy, ready to work on the set and rehearse with Kelly? Well, I've got all of our scenes put together except for the last one, so has anybody come up with something? Uh, Miss Andrews was working on a mystery thriller yesterday. I believe that will have to be for another show, so to answer your question, no, we do not have a end scene yet. What about Gates? Uh, he just left for school. Did he have anything? Not that I know of. And Chad? He's laying down upstairs not feeling too well, so nothing from the Chad man. Well, what about Kelly? Well, I just saw her. Drawing blanks. That leaves us one person. Moi? <laughs> Well, moi has come up with a great big fat zero for a closing scene. So you're telling me I've run out of actors and writers? Sorry, Rudy. Well, I guess let's set up what we've got. When you and Kelly get done rehearsing, Gates gets back, we'll just try to get together and see if we can come up with something to close with. You got it. Mr. Jackson. This is Kilmer. How are you today? I'm fine, and you? I'm fine, thank you, just keeping busy. Have a seat. What brings you to our office today? Well, I was just driving by and thought I'd stop in. Is your husband available? No, I'm sorry, he's not. He's actually at a pastor's meeting. He attends a couple of those every week for our ministry. Well, Mrs. Kilmer, being a member on the board of your ministry, I have to say that you and your husband need to operate in a more professional manner. Well, we certainly do the best that we can. Well, this ministry that you have, what would you say is the most important aspect of its marketing? I'm sorry? How do you get your business? Oh, from churches. Exactly. And what is the main source of letting these churches and people know about what you have? Direct mailings. And how many mailings a year do you do? About six. Six. And is this letter part of the most recent ones you just sent out? I believe so. Well, Mrs. Kilmer, I was at a church today and I saw this sitting on a secretary's desk. And I asked her 
if I could have it, just so I could bring it to you. I'm not sure I understand. Mrs. Kilmer, take a good look at that letter, please. Okay. Take a good look at it. Yes? Do all of your letters go out looking like that? Like what, sir? Look at that label. It's on there any old way. And it's more in the wrong direction than it is the right direction. Mrs. Kilmer, do you not know that appearance is everything when it comes to being a professional in business? I'm a businessman, and I work in marketing. And believe me, appearance is what marketing is all about. You and your husband need to do a much better job when it comes to these mailings. That is awful. That would never go out of my office looking like that. Very sorry, sir. Well, sorry doesn't help you get business, now does it? You just need to be more mindful about what you do around here, and you need to make sure those mailings look professional or don't send them out at all. I hear what you're saying. Do you do these yourself? No, we use a mailing service. A mailing service? Well, they need to be fired, because that is terrible. Do they all go out looking like this? I don't know. Probably. You don't know? Well, Mrs. Kilmer, if I were you, I would be on that phone right now, calling that mailing service, and I'd be finding out what's going on. I know what's going on. Do you? Well, if you do, would you please give me one good reason why your ministry would send a letter out looking like this? The people who do our mailings are students from the School for the Blind. They called us and asked us if we had any small jobs for their students to do, because no one else would help them out. And this was the only job that we could find for them to do. I realized that the label isn't on there straight, but we were trying to help the students out. Hey, Gates. What do you say, Trev? What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. It's just something I saw. Well, how'd it go to school? Well, it went fine. They, they combined three middle school classes, and I spoke to the students, and then they were going to watch a movie, so I left. So why do you seem so down? I'm not down, man. It's, I'm all right. Well, something's wrong. You look like you just saw a ghost. You know, man, I'm, I'm 54 years old, and I've been a Christian more than half my life. I've seen a lot of things in this world, but I don't think I ever saw what I did today at that school. What? Well, after I spoke to the students, they were going to show a movie to one of the classes. And I remember. This is a public school, not a Christian school. Well, I noticed that the students sat down to watch the film, but there was one little girl that got up, went outside, and sat in the hallway. And this got my attention, and I wondered why. Well, the movie started, and I left. I went outside, and there she was, sitting in the hallway. So I walked down the hall and got to the door, I was about to leave the building, and I stopped. I couldn't get that out of my mind. Why that little girl was sitting in the hallway? I mean, did she have detention or something? So I went back and asked her. And you will never guess what she told me. What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just got an idea. I've got an idea of how to end the show this week. I gotta find Rudy. I'll see you later. But what about that little girl? What did you see?
Excuse me, little girl. Weren't you just in one of the classes I spoke to? Yes, sir. May I ask what grade you're in? I'm in the sixth grade. Oh. Well, I know it's none of my business, but is there a special reason why you're sitting out here in the hall? I mean, is this some sort of punishment or something? No, sir. You're a hall monitor? No, sir. Well, I'm all out of guesses. You know, I came out of the classroom and I saw you sitting here. I just walked on down the hall, but my curiosity just wouldn't let me walk out the door. So I have to ask, why are you sitting out here in the hall? Well, my class is getting ready to watch a movie, and whenever we watch a movie, the teacher has to send home a permission slip to our parents. Why do they do that? Well, because sometimes a movie has bad words in it, and so the teacher has to get permission from your parents so that you can watch it. Oh, I see. And your parents wouldn't let you watch it? No. I didn't want to watch it. May I ask why? Well, my teacher has seen the movie, and I asked her about it. And in this movie, they say the name of Jesus in bad ways lots of times. And, well, I'm a Christian, and I just didn't think it was right for me to watch it. So the movie takes the name of Jesus in vain, and you're sitting out here in the hall while the rest of your classmates are all watching the movie? Yes, sir. God bless you for what you did, little girl. God bless you too, sir. I also want to thank you for being here tonight at the 7th Street Theater. The last scene that you just saw where Lisa played the sixth grade girl is one that none of us can take credit for. But that scene was inspired by a little girl who did that very thing this past week in a public school. And I know, because I just happened to be there that day talking with some classes, and I saw that little girl in the hallway. And what she did touched my heart probably more than anything has in quite some time. If there's one thing I want to do with my life is to live in honor of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Jesus is the name above every name and that at that name, every knee will bow. It also says that there is no other name under heaven whereby anyone can be saved. Now usually the cast will come out at this time and we would take a bow and you would applaud us. But tonight, we don't feel worthy of the applause. If I was to applaud anyone tonight, it would be that little sixth grade girl whose name I don't even know who stood very tall this past week for the name of Jesus.